Vogue is really powerful. It's such a powerful brand. If something is featured in Vogue, it kind of immediately gets that stamp of like, this is approved. I think fashion magazines can and have for a long time done more harm than they have done good for the way that women feel about themselves. I think a lot of that has to do with the lack of representation that we see within fashion magazines. There's only one kind of cisgendered, straight, white, extremely thin woman that we see depicted a lot. And that's really not making people feel included in our conception of what beauty is. What was so remarkable about Australian Vogue? First of all, no Vogue had ever asked me to guest edit before. They were the first. And they were also the first that kind of acknowledged my efforts towards sustainability in the fashion space. So many stylists and so many magazines that I've worked with have seen doing things sustainably as a barrier. I cannot tell you how many stylists I've worked with. Just like, you'll never be able to look chic that way. This is not gonna make a difference. I have this very nice dress here. Why won't you just put it on? I mean, it, it's been a real battle. So what's really exciting about the way that they embraced the challenge was that they saw it as a way to actually push the edges on things. We want this on the cover. We think this is worthy of a whole issue. I realized um, how deeply committed she was to creating a really great magazine with really useful content and challenging us as a team to address some of the issues, not just around sustainability, but also around more diverse casting on our pages, around questioning why we'd always done things a certain way, why did we do this? She really wanted to get into the, you know, the, the nuts and bolts as to what makes the magazine and what has made it today. I travelled to Bangladesh and I saw the difference between an environment where you, know, you pay a proper premium for what you wear and, and an environment where you don't. And then the factory collapse happened in Rainer Plaza, um, which was actually a factory that I physically went to. How did we completely lose our relationship and our connection to actually who physically made the clothes? How did it become all about which brand that have nothing to do with the integrity of the item? That's a really big problem. More than 80% of garment workers are women. So if you kind of aren't paying attention to, to what the conditions are like within the fashion industry, you are specifically, especially on the lower end of the chain, you're saying that you just don't really care about women and what they're paid for their work. It was pretty revolutionary that a lot of the stuff that we featured was me in vintage. You know, to put vintage clothes in a fashion magazine. That, I think that was quite a big statement. Somehow the, like this existing was like, no, no, this is happening. I have many metrics for assessing the success of a magazine and of a specific issue. We look at circulation, sales, and we listen on social media, all of that. But my two most powerful metrics are, A, which magazine gets stolen out of my office first and never comes back? And then the second one is if my wife or my children even ask me to bring an issue home. And both happened to the Emma Watson issue. It disappeared from my office three times. The challenges and the compass that Emma set at that time was um, absolutely, you know, true of where the world was going. And I feel like Emma very much directed us on that path. I just felt so proud and just so grateful to the magazine and to Edwina for giving me the opportunity and letting me take up that much space. I mean, I just felt really touched. She would attribute that much change towards us working together. You know, it's really, I'm really humbled by that. It's really, it's really lovely. Yeah.